Kia ora everyone, welcome back to the Southside Kōrero. Today, well, another amazing day, another another day, another dollar. And we're with an amazing guest, Damien. My God, we had a good interview, didn't we? We had a bloody great interview. That was awesome, man. I had a great time. In the words of a great man, bloody marvellous. Bloody marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to enjoy this episode. I'm not going to say much, and hopefully, we won't say much. So, for you to watch it, enjoy. So, welcome to my show, um, Damien. Thanks for having me, Vic. No, awesome, awesome. Uh, first and foremost, um, you know, we only just met like last week, right? There yep. was, yep. man, there was. Yeah, good weird. first meet, too. No, absolutely. You know, I was, we were talking about wrestling. Yeah, we got along real well, had that uh, same topic. <laughs> I know, that same topic mindset. Yeah, I know, right? No, it was cool. <sighs> <laughs> Our producer just being a little, uh, little tight, a little shite. <laughs> so you know, um, what? Well, yeah, like I said, we were, like what we were connected by was by wrestling. What brought, what interested you into wrestling? What brought you into wrestling? Um, oh, well, I guess I was just a young kid and I was uh, channel surfing, trying to find something to watch. Yeah, came across an image of John Cena holding his spinner belt. Yeah. And so I kept watching, and then I uh, never really looked back. And to this day, I still watch wrestling. Maybe not as much as I did when I was younger, but I'm still an avid fan for sure. Yeah. Did you have Sky? Um. Yep. Yep. Had Sky. So see, I used to watch it on the box every Friday night, Monday see, night raw. See, I I was one of the unfortunate kids who did not have Sky. Uh, so uh, back when, uh, so I'll give you some some background. Back in the days when it was um, the when Sky used to broadcast in UFH uh, broadcasting, right. so you could be you could be so sneaky in getting some of the Sky Sky channels. Yeah, yeah, I remember that actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what happened was that you get the Sky channel, but it's all shh. Yeah, it was all staticky. And, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'll, I'll be like, I'll be listening to Monday. I'll be listening to Monday Night Raw, going, ah, oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> Jr. Yeah, well, yeah, sweet, got it. Oh, that was a good promo. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I was like, I can imagine in my head, Eddie Guerrero's doing it. Ah, oh, sweet. I guess it's a bit like reading a book. Yeah, no, you you're right. Put absolutely. all the imagery in your own head. No, absolutely. No, I like that idea. And because, like, you, I don't have the picture in front of me, I basically start looking through it, you know? Mm, mm. Who was your favorite wrestler, by the way? Uh, Jeff Hardy threw and through. Hey, so, yeah, just throw it up in yeah, there. I, I, just, I don't know what it was. It's just something just really drew me to him. Like, yeah. I guess it was his, his charisma without actually trying to be charismatic. I uh, mean, I. Favorite wrestler of all time. No, absolutely. My favorite wrestler of all time, um, back in that period, was Kurt Angle. Oh yeah. Yeah, I loved Kurt Angle. Yeah. Olympic hero, you know, and had so much so fun, so much funny stories and whatnot. Uh, some of them a bit too adult for this channel, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it was it's funny things that the the WWE creates when it comes to creating wrestlers in their stories. Um, do you know a good story from the WWE? that you want to share with us that's not <laughs> a bit risque well there's so many I mean there are so many good ones and there are so many bad ones yeah absolutely um, I think I have to go back to Jeff Hardy I'm sorry I have to it was his whole underdog story he, he kept trying to climb that mountain but he kept just getting pushed off when he was almost about to reach that brass ring and um then he finally did it in uh, Armageddon 2009. Yeah, no, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, I remember that because, fun fact, it was actually my birthday that day. Yo! And my favorite wrestler won the world championship on my birthday. That was that was one of the best birthday presents I've ever received. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And, and he deserved it, right? Oh, for sure, man, for sure. I mean, he battled his personal <laughs> demons, but he definitely deserved a shot at that goal. No, absolutely. And uh, I, if I remember correctly, just him winning that spinner title for the very first time was like, oh, It was mind-blowing, man. It was mind-blowing. He didn't hold it for long, but he still held it. No, absolutely. Yeah. It, it was just like... It made uh, kids like myself and everyone else look at it and go, bro, he actually... Yeah, ah. yeah that underdog story, yeah, it's, <laughs> nah, it's something just about anyone can relate to. <laughs> no, absolutely, yeah. man, absolutely. If you were a WWE creative at that time period, 
what story would you have created? Like, if you, if let's just say I'm, I'm Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Or, <laughs> oh, son, and I heard that you're a, you're a creative writer. I want you to give you a job in the WWE. Uh, here you go, son. Um, what story would I have created? Um, man, that's a, that's actually a really tough question, but um. <laughs> I say, want to go back to Jeff Hardy and say, yeah, yeah no, I want to put that belt on him sooner. <laughs> <laughs> see, I, see I, I'll show you my story. So I would, I, would, I would put Kurt Angle, Eddie Guerrero, Batista in a storyline. The storyline is that Eddie's trying to go clean. So he, he's trying to get rid of his mon- monarchy of uh, lie, cheat, and steal. Yeah, yeah. So the only way he can do it is if he goes works with Kurt Angle. Okay, and then Kurt Angle's trying to teach him ways on how to on the straight and narrow. Batista's coming up to go, bro. That's not you. That's not you, bro. You know, you know, you're not you're not being you. You're doing things that you're not making. Yeah, you're, you're not, not being yourself comfortable. when you're hungry. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then basically, what ends up so that, that's the big build up. Eddie starts losing matches because he's not doing his usual thing. Yeah. But Kurt Angle's watching him. He's like, yeah, man, yeah. But really, Kurt Angle's trying to use him. To get the shot against Batista because at the time Batista was World Heavyweight yeah. Title Champion, yeah. right? Yeah. At the end of it, Eddie turns on Kurt because Kurt's cheating. Kurt starts to cheat yeah. Yeah. at the end of it. So when it comes to Batista, Kurt tries to cheat and then Eddie steps in and then Eddie cheats for Batista and he wins the title. And then. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then, yeah, that would have been an interesting watch back uh, in the day. No, absolutely. Yeah. See, I'm that wrestling kid, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I, I heard all about it last week and today. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely. So, I want to go back to our, our earlier conversations. Uh, we were talking about like creative writing, uh, you know, when we first introduced each uh, each other. So, what sort of what got you into writing stories in general? Um, when I was younger, I used to watch my mum write a lot of things down. She'd like to write, write song lyrics and create her own little stories and whatnot. And um, so I guess it, she kind of passed that on to me in a way. Um, but it was also sort of an escape for me. I had a bit of a tough childhood at times. And um, so I would just sit there at my kitchen, uh, dining room table just writing these little stories about uh, a superhero called Cube Man. He was essentially just a square in a superhero suit with a face and nose and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, it started off as an escape. And then as time went on, it just sort of became not just a hobby, but just something that I was good at. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what, do you, what do you do to get you into that sort of mode of, of writing? Do you listen to music? Because I know Jeff Hardy... When he draws stuff, yeah. when he does his artwork, he, he listens to music frequently yeah. to yeah. get into the mood of things, yeah. to, to get what's on this paper. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, music definitely. Um, and I'll, I'll also find sometimes that the music will um, inspire what I'm writing. Like if I'm listening to a, a metal song that sounds really angry, then my writing comes across as angry. But then if I'm listening to like a reggae song like Uncle Bob, Bob Marley, sorry. No, you um, don't then my my writing will become a lot more chilled out and yeah yeah it's that vibe right you're cre- you're creating that vibe from the from the music that you create exactly i swear to god you're just like jeff hardy honestly <laughs> just a little bit tubbier hey sh- <laughs> honestly if if jeff hardy had to meet you he would have been like creatively yeah, we're yeah. at the same way would have bumped my fist yeah absolutely <laughs> man Absolutely. So, with that said, um, I know you mentioned music, and you. What sort of genres would you know that that sparks creativity for you? Like, what what sort of genres get you into that creativity, and what sort of what is your favorite artist to listen to mostly? Oh man, that's a loaded question. Um, for genres, it can just be anything, mm-hmm. anything. Like, I'm not I'm not picky about no, I'm not picky anymore about what I listen to. I used to be back in the day, but. Um, yeah, and when it comes to favorite artists, there's so many to choose from. Um, so in the rock world, I'll listen to a bit of Poor Man's Poison or Seether. But then on the flip side of that, I'll listen to Bob Marley. And then on the flip side of that, I'll listen to a bit of Juice World, who's a rapper. Hey, so, um, rest in peace, my friend. Yeah, rest in peace, Anthony Higgins. Um, 
yeah, um, yeah, it, it can be really anything, man. Um, just whatever I feel like at the time. No, absolutely, mm. and that, and like you said, it influences your what you're writing. Yeah. Right? So, why? What age did you, could you say that you started your writing and and um. What I'm, I'm trying to form this question very nicely, which is, um, what year? Yeah, what age did you start writing, and how many stories have you written so far? Uh, so I was about seven when I started writing. Uh, maybe a little bit younger, but no, seven is when I remember writing the Cube Man stuff. Um, how many stories I've written? <sighs> a lot. Uh, do you need an exact number? Because it's just no, a no, lot. No, no, no. That's a number. Obviously, that's <laughs> yeah. a number. Yeah, well, th- yeah, th- there's been heaps, man. Especially uh, during my time at MIT, I wrote so many. Um, not always good ones, but. Hey, you keep, <laughs> you keep your good ones in your, your bad ones. Uh, exactly. Your good ones in your bad ones. The good ones are for the portfolio, the bad ones are to throw in the trash. <laughs> hey, you should keep your ones. <laughs> no, no, I, I do keep them. I keep everything. I've, I've got it all stored in a Google Drive that I, I'm yet to go through and take all the good bits out. No, that's cool. That's cool. So you mentioned MIT. Uh, mm-hmm. How long were you at MIT and, and who helped you out in, in that um, field of creative writing? Uh, so I was at MIT for three years, started in 2016 and ended in 2018. Um, I had a lot of different lecturers like uh, Anne Kennedy, Catherine Shidji, Sue Orr, James Littlewood um, and more that I can't think of right now. That's but um, yeah, and, and they really helped me in becoming a much better writer. Um, I can't say that I learned everything I needed to at MIT, just to be honest, but I did learn how to be a good writer. And and at the end of the day, that's what I went there for. No, absolutely. Uh, The reason why I'm leaning into MIT is because you met someone there that we both know, right? You're talking about Guy? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Oh, are you talking about Will? Both, both actually. <laughs> who, who did you meet first? I met Will first. Uh, so I took an internship with Will for his uh, Rad Dads community on Facebook back in 2018 as part of my professional practice course. Um, so, yeah, that's how I met Will. And then he actually showed me the ropes uh, about a year later and he was helping me out with learning how to video edit and... Um, yeah, helping me job hunt actually. Nice. Yeah, yeah. We went to Sky and they took us a tour on a tour around the building. It was really cool. So you wanna you wanna briefly explain what Rad Dads is? Rad Dads, right? Uh, so Rad Dads is a community, or well, was a community on Facebook about uh, just being a father, really, um, which. I could actually kind of relate to because being an older brother and there's quite a hefty age difference between me and my siblings. So I've sort of tried to take on that dad role myself uh, here and there just to um, help encourage them to, to, to be people living in, in this strange little planet we call Earth. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Nah, that's cool. That's cool. Because I I, I saw the promo. I like uh, three weeks ago. I saw the promo for Red Dads. Yeah. And I was like, man, that's so cool. Yeah. That's that's this little cool little promo. And then we meet up, and he goes, yeah, I helped out with Red Dads. I was like, yo, <laughs> sick. <laughs> yeah. Man, that was awesome. Should definitely come back, Will, wherever you are. I know, right? He's behind the camera. Behind the camera. <laughs> I'm just saying right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I, look. I'm gonna throw my pitch right there. I'm gonna, yeah, you're my, you're my producer for this. Okay. So I'm throwing my pitch. All right, Red Dad Two. Red Dad's Two. Yeah, oh. man. But but include. In, uh, I remember the heated argument that we had. <laughs> Cat dads included. Yeah, cat dads included. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's Got shaking it. his head, folks. He's shaking his head. Now, nah, well, rad dads too. Yeah, rad dads cat, too. Cat, cat dads, you know, cat dads included. Well, we right? could just start our own one called Cat Dads. Yo, I know, right? <laughs> See, Will never knows the, the lovingness of a cat, you know, it's great. Yeah, I mean, once you actually learn to get their affection, then that's all there is, affection. I mean, I, I sometimes get annoyed at how badly my cat wants my affection. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes I'm sitting there tinkering away on my laptop, my cat comes up and cl- tries to climb on my chest. I'm like, no, no. please stop. <laughs> See, they're, they're technically like children, Will. Come on. <laughs> Red Dad's too with pets. <laughs> <laughs> And I was just, uh, we, we, 
we had a good time talking to each other last week, and it was awesome to meeting you yeah, as you well. Too, and we, we went through a whole bunch of topics and whatnot, especially about your creative writing. Um, what are what are you, what are the things that you're you're looking forward to in the future in terms of creative writing for yourself? I mean, ideally, I would already be a published author, but I'm not. Um, I don't know, really. Um, my dream of being a professional author has kind of been dwindling as of late because the real world's kind of hit and I'm trying to look for a job and whatnot. So my writing's sort of taken a bit of a back seat, unfortunately. But, I mean, I'm always open to, to giving it another crack at some point in the future. I just need to get some more ideas and get past this writer's block that I've been having. So... You mentioned writer's block, and that and that's a huge thing when it comes to creative writers like like uh, yourself. What in in like five words? What can how can you describe writer's block in five words? Frustrating, um, annoying. Uh, I've got six for you. Pain in the ass. <laughs> no, I I agree. I I definitely agree. Pain in the ass because I I have I have I'm myself as a creative writer. I I used right. to write things like four years ago. I used to love writing things. Mm. I used to let's see. I'm a fanfic writer. You see, I'm yeah, just gonna yeah, say that out yeah, loud. Yeah. I'm a fanfic writer, yeah. and uh, I have written some things that are, I'm very proud of. And uh, <coughs> and then I've written things I'm not very proud of. Yeah, well, that's the thing with all writers. Sometimes you have the good ones, and sometimes you have the bad ones. It's just the thing. It's just what comes as part of being a writer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what is it that you, as as for for those who are listening, what are things that you do to to alleviate the, that block, that writer's block? Well, the thing is, I never used to get writer's block, and I used to brag about it. I used to hear other writers telling me, oh, I've got writer's block, and I used to be like, huh, I never get writer's block. Uh, and then, then it kind of just hits you, and I haven't quite recovered from my writer's block yet, so I'm not really sure uh, how to alleviate it yet. So I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah, we, we're both on that same direction, right? Mm. Because we... When it does hit, writer's block just tends to take over it for a little bit, huh? That's true. That's very true. So, with that said, with writer's block, was there uh, was there a last piece that you remember writing? Uh, yep. And could you share it with us? I wrote a piece recently. Um, so there was this competition, a uh, two hundred and fifty word microfiction um, competition, and. So everyone would be put into little groups and whatnot. And um, in order to make it through to the next round, you needed to place at least within the top 10 of your group. I placed 11th. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so I got an honorable mention, but that's all I got. Um, so it was – so for each group, you were assigned different uh, words and different um, uh, genre. So I had a fairy tale. My word was stamping. And then there was something else as well that I've forgotten. So it was essentially about this old woman who uh, heard about this fabled pool of... Um, oh, man, I can't remember what it was called now. But she hears about this pool where she can jump in and she can make a wish and her wish will come true. And so she, she jumps in and her wish was to become a horse. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Wow. <laughs> No, nah, that's cool. That would have been a funny, funny one to read, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it was a lot of. I got quite a lot of good comments on it and feedback. Um, people weren't quite expecting that ending, um, but I was trying to throw in little hints, hints in the story towards that ending. No, that's cool. Yeah, I love that because even you, even though you gave me like a brief synopsis, I can imagine it. This lady going through the forest finds, yeah, finds what she's looking for, jumps into it, and then out comes a white horse. Yeah. Like and you're like, oh, yeah. yeah, what the hell, man? Where was that coming from? <laughs> I did not like, see that coming. Nah, man. <laughs> she could wish to be like a millionaire and all that stuff. Not nah, <laughs> nah, a horse. Wanted to be a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? I know that you mentioned that you got writer's block. Would you? Is there any other future plans for you to do any form of writing, or is there any? Um, is there anything on the woodshed for that? I so about 
two years ago, I actually wrote a full book. I spent uh, five weeks working on it, and I finished it in five weeks. And so, uh, and I never really tried to get it published, but as of late, I have been trying to get it published. Um, so hopefully, that gets published. And um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. It's a it's a book about it's about a collection of short stories that have this overarching narrative where all the stories kind of combine together towards the end to. Uh, uh, to output this underlying message of uh, coexisting in this little strange planet we call Earth. No. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I, I I did the same thing, but it was a darker undertone. All right. So I'm not going to mention the premise because it is is very dark. But it's um so it starts off with a with a journal diary of a of a teenager. Right. And it goes through his whole day. And then it goes to another general diary, but it, it goes from a different point of view. Okay. But it, it goes through five different points of views until it reaches a, the last one, the fifth one, which is a reporter. Mm-hmm. And the reporter is writing up all about the four different journal entries, which then sums up what is happening in, in that day. So it's, it's it basically gotcha. sums up. It that sums up all of it. interesting, man. I'd yeah, definitely man. like to give it a read. Maybe I can drop you some feedback. No, absolutely. I can link that for you. So cool. That would be cool. I, it, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to mention the premise because it's quite under the dark undertones and whatnot. Yeah, fair enough. But it's, it, it, it's been like, it, it was influenced by one song. Oh, ah, yeah? What yeah. was the song? Can you uh, say that? Pumped Up Kicks. <laughs> Who's that by? Uh, uh, for the kids is what I think if I remember what the um, what the band is called. But uh, Pumped Up Kicks influenced the song. I will tell you after the podcast what, what it was meaning. And okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm look, I look forward to it, man. Look Sweet. To it. So we'll so we're coming up to our to our last part of our um, of our podcast. Uh, I have three more questions left. Um, yep. Shoot. Well, the first question is what. What piece of advice could you give to someone like myself or someone who's listening to this podcast who's wanting to get into into creative writing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what piece of advice? Um, try not to get too heartbroken if you ever get bad feedback or if your work can't get published, if uh, no one will accept it. Try not to be too heartbroken because uh, it can really take its toll. You can re- feel really, really bad about yourself if, um, if that happens. But um, just try to stay strong and, and try to keep writing as much as you can. Sweet. And um, and my my second question is: Do you have a a quote that you that you get inspired by, or that you love to have in your back pocket to go, "Hey, this is the quote that I like." Well, here's the thing: I don't really have a quote that inspires me, but I have this tattoo over here. I don't know if the camera can pick it up or not. Um, so it's a song by uh, Tool. It's called Sober, and uh, it's supposed to be "Why can't we not be sober?" But um, it so on my tat it says "Why can't we be sober?" And um, it's that's because life is boring if you are. <laughs> yeah. You know what, I'll I'll share I'll share since you shared my your one I'll share my one so I have two of them. Uh, so have you heard of a show called Ruby and a video yeah, game called R W B Y? Yep. And there's a video game called Hotline Miami. So my first quote is, um, "Do we live in destiny?" And then the the flip side of it is Hotline Miami, which is, um, "Do you like hurting people?" Okay. So the duality is that: Do you believe in destiny? I'm setting up my own destiny in my own, in my entire life. So that's the that's one side. Yeah. And then on the flip side is: Do you hurt? Do you like hurting people? Is is me going through my my own mental health struggles? And I'm gotcha. trying to and I'm trying to trying to alleviate that. So right. that's a reminder for me. So when I saw your tattoo and you came up with your quote, I was like, man, damn. <laughs> I need, Maybe I need you should a, get that tattooed on you. Oh, you do? No, I wish. I uh, wish I might yeah, get, you up get it right there. Yeah, man. Ah, man. Be cool lads. Uh, well, you got, you got the budget for us to get that tattoo, right? <laughs> <laughs> if only the camera could see. I know, right? <laughs> if, if the walls can speak. <laughs> but thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much, brother. Sure, man. 
it was good good to good to be a guest on your podcast i'm glad i could do it no absolutely and my last question is would you be coming back if you ever get called back well on the podcast yeah. you want me back on the podcast yeah, yeah man I, I actually had a real blast i wasn't expecting it to be this fun no absolutely. <laughs> yeah, he was nervous he was nervous yeah. when he came in i was extremely anxious i even went outside a bunch of times and had a little freak out but um no i came in here and i suddenly felt very very comfortable and that's thanks to this guy right here oh, shut. <laughs> but uh, once again i'm gonna shake your hand because you've been an amazing guest thank you so thank much, you you've been an amazing interviewer thank you <laughs> and once again thank you so much for watching this episode i hope you enjoy it as much as as i did Kia ora. yellow red and blue they are the primary colors that lie within all of the others. Yellow stands for curiosity. Blue stands for the beauty it's curious about. And red stands for the love between them. Each for all and all for each. Blended they make black. Erased they make white. Answers to why not yet found. Though yellow to find them. Blue to be rhyme, and red to be reason. The other colours to join them, A rainbow long since forgotten, Through the heavy grey of negativity. A pot of gold unnecessary for this rainbow, For this rainbow is never ending, A colourful glimpse into the eternal, A wheel for all to call home.